Slimehouse TV here at Horrorcon UK with myself, Theo Kane, just joined by the legendary Sid Haig. How you doing? How are you finding the con so far? It's fantastic. Yeah, I'm having a great time. The people are great. You're very good with the fans. I've seen you. They're all leaving very, very happy. They, they, they're all saying what a nice guy you are. That's what my goal is. To, you know, Everybody that comes to my table has to leave with a smile on their face if I have to drop my pants, okay? Feel free. That's fine. We'll get more views. <laughs> <laughs> what we do on this show, we, we, we like to talk a lot about the art of acting. I just wanted to ask you what your earliest memories are of wanting to act. It's amazing because um, when I was growing up, there was no television. Okay, Everything was radio. And I can remember that when I was nine years old, my parents and I were listening to the Oscar uh, Awards, okay? And at the age of nine, I made an acceptance speech during the commercial, okay? And my parents were laughing and everything. It was funny. But that kind of set the tone for where I was going, you know? And when I was young, uh, I was very clumsy and uh, I could trip over a dime, you know? And so they decided that I should take dancing classes. So I went and took dancing classes. And I loved it. I thought it was the greatest thing in the world. And when I was seven years old, I was getting paid to dance, okay? And uh, from there I went into music and uh, then into high school, into acting and still music. And, um, a year out of high school, I signed a record contract with Keen Records, who was Sam Cooke's uh, record company. Yeah, he was in a band, right? Yeah. And um, uh, we were doing great in, in regional uh, uh, markets. Uh, we were like number four on the charts, and but we weren't making any money. Okay? <laughs> it was in the dark days of rock and roll, in the early days. Um, and so at that age, I was smart enough to know that this was not a good thing. So I just backed out. I just backed away from it. I still play, but I just backed away from it. And a friend of mine said, you know, you ought to go to the Pasadena Playhouse. And I didn't even know what that was. Okay. I found out later that it was like one of the four top theater arts colleges in the world. The Moscow Art Theater the Royal Academy, the Sorbonne, and the Pasadena Playhouse. And uh, so I sent away for an application and uh, got my three letters of recommendation, went in for an interview, and and was accepted. And uh, starting to really learn what it is to take words off a page and breathe life into them, you know. And... Uh, uh, things just kicked off from there, and I started working. So when um, I heard that, like, you'd, obviously you've done a lot of TV. You've been in Batman, Man from Uncle, The A Team, The Six Million Dollar Man, all the big, all the big TV shows. Mission Impossible. Mission I did Impossible. nine of them. Yeah. Yeah. So you was in all, all this, all this stuff, and then did did you um, you took a step back because you felt like you were getting typecast as a heavy, and and then you got called up by Rob Zombie. Is that how it worked? Is that how it happened? Actually, I first got called up by uh, Quentin Tarantino. You did. For yes. Marcellus Wallace. Yes, yes. And uh, I had a big conversation with my agents yeah. telling them, you know, that I'm tired of doing television because it's just a grind. And at that point in time, television was just a, a distraction, okay, and to keep the audience interested enough to get to the next commercial. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it was. And you just ground out the work and ground out the work, and there was very little creativity and I just didn't want to be a part of that anymore. I wanted something with more meat to do, you know. And so I got um, invited to audition for Pulp Fiction. Went in, met Quentin Tarantino, and he said, you know, I just, I love your work. And I said, well, thank you. It's good to know that people like, you know, what you do. He said, no, look around. And I looked around in the office, and he had six one sheets from different films, and I was in every one of them. Really? And he made me sign one of the... <laughs> Uh, one sheets before I left the office. He wanted me to do it. I wanted to do it. The deal came down, and it was for one day. And I said, stop. We had this conversation, okay? There's four locations. How are we going to do four locations in one day, okay, and not make it something that's like yeah, television, yeah. okay? 
And nobody bothered to tell me that Quentin didn't work that way, that if the one-day contract turned into two weeks, oh well. Okay. Uh, so I turned it down, uh, not having any information. And um, it's probably the stupidest thing that I did, but you know, I, I had to do what I felt was right. And um, so that didn't, that didn't work out, but I did get a call at my house from Quentin Tarantino at one point. I still to this day do not know how he got my phone number. He's, I'm sure he gets what he wants. He's yeah, yeah so it's like He's the CIA, guy. you know, yeah, get yeah. me Sid Haig, okay. <laughs> and uh, he called and he said, I get it. You don't want to do any stupid heavies. Um, I've written the part of a judge for you, and I will not accept no for an answer. Jackie Brown. Jackie yeah, Brown, yeah. yeah. And so I said, well, okay, boss. And I showed up, and I got into the judge's robes, and he had, had not told Pam Greer that he had cast me in that role. Pam and I had done, at that point, we had done five pictures together. Yeah, yeah. And we were like this, brother and sister, okay? And uh, she took one look at me and started laughing so hard she wound up on the floor. <laughs> 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 yeah. So that was, that was that. And then nothing really exciting happened after that and until... I got a call from my agent, and he said, okay, here's the deal. I said, oh, Christ, what now? And he, you go to this office and sign a letter of non-disclosure, take the script home, read it, and if you like it, the part is yours. And I said, well, somebody's got some synapses working, okay? So I took the script home, and I read it, and it was House of a Thousand Corpses. And I said, I could have so much fun with this. I called the next day. I said, let's do this. And the first time I met Rob, actually, was when we were, I was getting my wardrobe fitting for Captain Spaulding. And uh, about three or four years later, four years later, uh, when he and Sherry got married, I was at the re wedding reception talking to his brother, and he said, this is so weird. And I said, what, the wedding? He goes, no, standing here talking to you. And I said, what the hell are you <laughs> talking about? He goes, well, when Rob and I were kids, we used to get up every Saturday morning and watch you on Jason of Star Command. And I kept popping up in films that Rob was yeah, watching. Yeah. And he said, you know, if I ever get to direct the movie, I want that guy in it. And so that's how it all started. And it happened. Yeah. Well, being an actor, what do you think makes a good director? You've obviously worked with some of the big names, Rob Zombie, Tarantino, and all the rest. Like, what, what do you, when you're acting yourself, what kind of direction do you like? What makes a good director to you? A good director to me is one who makes his vision clear to you and then gets the hell out of the way and lets you do your job, okay? There's too many puppet masters out there. Um, and uh, that's why I appreciate Rob Zombie and Quentin Tarantino and Jack Hill because they just wind me up and let me go. Uh, when I was um, listening to your Q&A, you said that a lot of, uh, you like to do a lot of um, non-scripted stuff, a mm -hmm. lot of ad-lib and, and not to, like the tutti fucking fruity or that line that yeah. all came like off the top when you were just ad-libbing stuff. Do you like to work that way? Oh, yeah. You, you know the uh, uh, the menu to uh, House of a Thousand Corpses, okay? I got the script for that at midnight the night before we were supposed to start shooting it, and it's like five minutes long. And I went in the next day to Rob, and I said, are you crazy? I can't memorize all of this in, you know, a couple of hours. He goes, well, do you understand where it has to go and, you know, what the high points are? I said, yeah. So he handed me a jelly donut and a pornographic magazine and said, go. So I just ad-libbed the whole thing. And you just come up with it all on the spot like that. Yeah. That's wicked. Um, and being being an actor yourself, it took you was you was in the industry for a long long time but it wasn't until there was a certain point where you actually were elevated to being like a recognizable face in cinema what would your advice be to other people that are wanting to get into acting that that might have been doing it for a while but are still struggling to get the kind of roles that they want okay this is something this is a line of winston churchill's okay to graduating uh, class of oxford i don't know what year it was but he came to the podium and he said these words never quit never 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 quit and he walked off stage and that's the deal never quit keep going do never never have a backup plan because nobody's backup plan is easier than it was <laughs> than the original thought of what it is that you want to do 
okay? And when you back up, your dream dies. That's it. And uh, what's next for today? What can we look forward to next? What What have you got coming up? I have four films in the can right now. Um, Death House, uh, High on the Hog, uh, Cynthia, and uh, a film called The Proptio. And then this summer I'm doing a couple of more films. Awesome. It seems like when the fans are coming at the con, like, you don't stop. I said, Sid, do you want a break? You're like, I don't take no fucking break. I'm here to sign autographs. That's what I do. And you're working all the time. You're doing so much work. How important is it, do you think, to just keep going and keep and nonstop? You have, you have to keep going because when, when you stop, that's it. It's, uh, that's the end. You, you subconsciously say, I give up, okay? And I never give up. That's it. I mean, when I was in school, I was living in the men's dorm, okay? And in the kitchen, we had little cubicles that we kept our food in. Nobody kept anything in the refrigerator because it would get stolen. Uh, so I opened up my little cabinet, and the only thing that was left in there one night was a box of rice. And I said, well, I guess tonight it's rice. And I lifted it up, and it was almost empty. I had a heaping tablespoon of rice left in that, in that box. And so I said, well, well, and I swallowed the rice and wa washed it down with some hot water and waited for it to swell. But I wasn't going to give up. No. You can't. You can't quit. Well, you're still here. It obviously didn't affect you. Yeah. <laughs> and just there's a lot of directors that we that we interview when we like to talk about directing on this show. And you kind of touched on it briefly. What would your advice be to someone that's directing, like how to direct actors? As a director, you have to, first of all, do your homework, do your research, know what it is that the story is about and what, what you're going to tell the people, and then convey that to your actors and to your crew, and let them do their work, okay? Hire the best people you can for what you can afford, and make sure that everybody understands what their job is and, and what you expect of them, and be kind I hate screamers, okay? Uh, I was doing a series with John Biner, um, and uh, the first uh, assistant director was just hollering at everybody the first day. And John and I looked at one another, and we. And the second day, the guy was gone. Yeah. Okay, because that just disrupts everything, it just turns everything sour. Yeah, yeah. You know? Keep, keep morale high. Yes, keep the morale high. Keep the attitude good. You're creating something. Come on, you're 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 breathing life into into characters. So, you know, you have to keep a positive attitude. Wicked. Well, it's been really good to talk to you, Sid. I'm a massive fan, and I can't wait to see what you've got coming out next. Thank you for coming okay. to Horicon right. uh, and for doing this quick interview with us. Uh, that's Slimehouse TV. If you want to keep up to date with any of the other interviews, it's www.slimehousetv.com and horrorconventions.co.uk if you want to get tickets for next year. Sid Egg. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Yeah. Okay.